Hello, everybody. My name is Matthew Halley. I'm a member of the engineering and marketing team here at Buckley Associates. Before we start the webinar, I just want to say thank you to everybody participating today. Appreciate you taking the time out of your day to learn with us. It means a lot here at Buckley just to uh, offer the, uh, it means a lot um, to us here at Buckley. A lot of effort goes into these planning, these webinars. So we're happy you get to see the value and the services we're providing the engineering and contractor community here in the Northeast. Today, I'm joined by Jamie Jaswinski. She's the Regional Sales Manager at Powered Air. She'll be talking today about how to properly apply air curtains to appropriate air spaces, um, how to leverage IECC 2015 to eliminate vestibules from designs to free up valuable real estate. And she'll also be talking about some new product technology that they've, they've been developing, including UVC germ control and wind sensor uh, air curtains. So these topics we're discussing today are very familiar with uh, to everybody here at the Buckley engineering team at each location. We deal, we deal with these systems daily, and we have 10 mechanical engineers in the Northeast market to read uh, and assist in your design. If you have any questions, um, feel free to use the chat function to ask your question, and we'll either um, answer it at the time or wait until the end, depending on how many questions we get. We'll also follow up at the end with um, a PDH credit if, if uh, you would like it, and we'll also send you um, some previous trainings that we've done, if you guys like to check those out as well. So I'm going to hand this over to Jamie Jaswinski and uh, thank you all again for your time today. Thanks, Matthew. And thank you again, everybody, for attending this webinar today. My name is Jamie Jaswinski. I have been with Powered Air for over 20 years uh, as a regional sales manager. So we are located in Greenville, PA. Uh, we manufacture air curtains, anything from a small drive through window to a huge 20 by 20 dock door and everything in between. Just starting off, what is an air curtain? Uh, basic concept, it is just a wall of air separating two environments. Uh, whether it's hot from cold, clean from dirty, flying insects to non-flying insects, it is essentially just a wall of air. Now this wall of air can vary greatly. Um, I see a lot of engineers that get comfortable with picking one specific air curtain, and that's what they like to use for any application they're working on. Well, I can assure you that an air curtain that we have for maybe a drive-through window is very different than what we would supply for a huge dock door. So it is very important at picking and selecting the proper air curtain for your application, and that's going to be a majority of what I touch on today. All right, what we're going to talk about, properly applying air curtains for commercial and industrial spaces. I'm going to touch on the benefits of air curtains, anything from energy cost savings to comfort, whether it be employees or customer comfort, safety, and then what Matthew mentioned, we're going to talk about um, superior building design, which leads into the code and standard updates. I'm also going to touch on how to properly select air curtains, getting into controls. There are so many different ways to control air curtains that you might not be familiar with and the proper installation, and maybe a few different applications you're not familiar with, and then touching on air purification. And finally, the biggest complaint I hear when I'm talking about air curtains is engineers tend to shy away from them because they're loud and noisy. So I'm gonna talk about ways that we have taken to uh, reduce noise levels. All right, starting with energy cost savings as a benefit. This is a map of the United States, and you can see this is a Standard application, I guess you could say, it's a six foot wide by seven foot high entry door. Uh, we're assuming a high traffic commercial building, so maybe a convenience store, gas station, hospital, retail facility. That entry door would be open about four hours throughout the day. And this is just heating season. So this is not taking into account cooling season. It is just from November to March. There's also an additional cost savings for cooling season. If you look down in climate zones one and two, you'll see it's not a very significant savings for this heating season, but if you were to factor in the cooling season, you're gonna see a much more significant savings. So again, just a six foot wide by seven foot high opening, uh, 70 degree inside design temp, that door is open four hours throughout the day. Uh, different cost savings range anywhere from $7,400, you know, down to a couple hundred dollars. I can tell you an estimated delivered cost for this unit is maybe $2,900 for unheated and $3,500 if you were looking at a heated unit. So if you can take into account the air curtain cost as well as installation, you're looking at a two year or less return on your investment, 
which makes it a little bit easier to justify the cost of an air curtain. All right, now, most manufacturers will have some kind of cost savings tool available on their website. So I'm just briefly gonna take you through what we have. Uh, this link here, you just need to fill in these data blocks and it's gonna give you a three page printout of what kind of savings you would be looking at. Again, the application I mentioned, there's heating as well as cooling. Let's just take a look at heating. Your inside design temp, uh, let's say this is maybe a, a convenience store. So you're looking around 70 degrees. That door would be open maybe four hours throughout the day, opening at, let's say, 6 a.m. and closing at 11 p.m. Seven days a week, let's do a standard seven foot high by six foot wide opening. Now, when it comes time to select the model, most manufacturers will also have a selection program on their website, which I'll show you here in a moment. Um, I can just tell you for this application, we would recommend, it's called the CED. It's a customer entrance door. It is a very quiet, uh, not an not a objectionable airflow. So that is what we typically recommend for entryways. And then you would just need to enter the size. This is for the United States. Let's do this for Massachusetts. Let's do it for Boston. Door coefficient is a standard. Same with we have cost of electricity and gas. These are national averages, but you can see you can go in here and enter something if you're dealing with different numbers in your area. If you hit calculate savings, it is gonna give you this three page printout, uh, just showing you what you'd entered. It's gonna come down and actually plug in catalog data and then coming down, plugging in climatological information. This is for Boston. And again, this is just for one heating season. This is not cooling season. So this is November to March, average high, average low, average wind speed. Then it's breaking it down even further into the average temperature throughout the operating day. And then probably what you are most concerned with, we're getting down to the calculations. Uh, we're figuring the amount of door entering without the air curtain, same calculations just with the air curtain factoring out the difference. And then you can see the bottom line here, an estimated annual um, savings for the heating season is almost $5,000. Now I did another one just to kind of show you, we won't go through this, but just to show you the difference between a commercial and an industrial application. This is more of an industrial application. Uh, inside design temp, 65 degrees, hours per day that that door is in use, three. Uh, three shifts, seven days a week for a larger 16 by 16 opening. So you can see the cost savings for one heating season is over $17,000. And I can tell you um, an estimated delivered cost for this unheated unit might be anywhere from eleven dollars to $12,000. Still talking about benefits, I'm still touching on energy cost savings, but also getting to, into increased comfort. If there is one takeaway I would like for you guys to take from this presentation, I just wanna create awareness of how much infiltration occurs when doors are open and they're not protected, and then the resulting cost attached to this. So what you're looking at on this screen is some CFD designs. We can do this in-house. So if you have ever any certain scenarios you might wanna see ran, we can certainly do that for you. Uh, what we're looking at here on the left is an open doorway without an air curtain protecting it. So what you have is a 10 mile per hour wind pushing that 40 degree air into the conditioned space, which is about 70 degrees. You can see without that air curtain protecting it, there is significant heat loss. Um, it's gonna cost a lot of money to reheat that air. And also in addition to that, it's gonna have a huge impact on comfort. So I always think of you know a restaurant, if there's tables close to an open doorway and that cold air is coming in, people are not gonna wanna sit there for long. Picture on the right is the same scenario. We just have an unheated air curtain protecting that doorway. So it's discharging that conditioned air to the floor. It's successfully stopping the majority, majority of that outside wind pressure from entering. So you can see right there, money would be saved as well as a big improvement in comfort. Getting into more increased comfort, more and more emphasis is placed now on comfort, whether it's employees or customers. The impact of workplace temperature on employee productivity will lead to higher and more serious expenses in the long run. I don't think people are aware of this. Um, just some important aspects to keep in mind regarding workplace temperatures. If your employees are comfortable, it's gonna improve their productivity. Also the longevity they're at a job. Uh, reduced absenteeism. I always think when it, we're, we're an hour north of Pittsburgh, so we get pretty cold winters. Maybe not quite like what you guys experienced up in, in Boston in the severe Northeast, but it gets pretty cold. 
And I always think on those cold days, whenever it's freezing outside, the poor people, the hospital information desk, you know, your grocery store cashiers, you walk in and they're in scarves and gloves. I'm thinking, surely the thought of calling off that day must have, have ran through their minds. So if you can keep them comfortable, it's going to help reduce absenteeism. Also, another benefit, air curtains can help separate environments. We do a lot of applications where you might have a production plant that's attached to offices. Um, and when those doors open, the smells from that production plant can come into the offices. So what they will do is use an air curtain to protect that office space from the smells coming in. That picture on the bottom right, this is actually the CEO of Chick-fil-A. Uh, most of their drive through units, you will see this low profile, profile unit there. And they use that not only to keep their conditioned air in, but also to keep the fumes from the cars out, as well as insects from coming into the facility. Getting into increasing comfort for customers, it is shown that if customers are comfortable, they're more likely to stay longer, they're more likely to spend more money, whether it's shopping, drinking, eating. Also, a lot of people like to leave their doors open, um, attract customers with an air curtain that is pop, you can make that possible. Uh, one big thing now that's an advantage for that is it helps eliminate touch points to decrease chance of cross-contamination if you can leave those doors open. Also, an open doorway will act as an invitation to enter the shop and also kind of serve as a window to allow people to see what's going on inside. Uh, with those open doorways, it's going to improve accessibility for wheelchairs and strollers, making it more likely that they'll come in. Um, but with that air curtain running, you still have your barrier against insects, dust, pollution, fumes, and obviously conditioned, unconditioned air. A couple of pictures here on the right, the top picture. This is a little coffee shop in downtown Pittsburgh. And before they had that air curtain there, whenever it was cold outside and they had their morning rush, the temperature inside the facility would drop 10 degrees. And up by the cashier and where they had that seating by the doorway, it would get even colder. They put a heated air curtain there. With that air curtain, it helps maintain temperatures uh, and the employees and customers now have their environmentally content. So it made a huge difference with the impact of the inside comfort. Picture on the bottom right, this is an art gallery in Park City, Utah, and the owner insists on leaving that door open. You know, it's that retail psychology, kind of like I talked about, it theorizes um, that eliminating that barrier will increase foot traffic. So um, you can imagine in Park City, Utah in the winter with the door open, it would get very cold, but with this air curtain, it makes it possible. It's reducing infiltration and also providing supplemental heat. So that is also acting as a space heater as well. Another benefit of sanitation, insect control is a very common application. It's also called fly fans. We'll hear that quite a bit. They're essentially the same thing, whether it's an air curtain, air door, fly fan, they're just interchangeably used terms. Um, of all creatures, the house fly is nature's most effective germ dispensing organism. Uh, pretty disgusting, but flies will establish a breeding ground on top of any source of food available. And anytime they touch or land on your food, it leaves behind um, deposits of bacteria. So you can see why it's so important to keep insects out of restaurants, cafeterias, uh, hospitals. And the most disturbing part is we only see one of every 20 flies on average. So there are entire lines of air curtains specifically for bug control. So if you are dealing with them, um, food service, anything where you require an NSF certification, there are quite a few air curtains that have these certifications. Uh, there's different ones for entry doors as well as back doors. So you have different options to choose from. A common question I get asked is, can I mount an air curtain on the exterior of a building? And you can see this picture on the right. These air curtains are in fact mounted outside. The only time we recommend doing this is for bug control, insect control only. The reason being with that air curtain being mounted outside, it is pulling unconditioned outside air through the intake and that's what it is discharging onto the floor. So as that air splits when it hits the floor, a portion of that will be pushed into the interior space. So it will actually do more harm than good for climate control if you are putting this outside. Picture on the right again, this is Albertson's flagship store. And we're seeing more and more of this where people have this open concept where they have the garage doors they like to leave open that lead to patios or bar areas. So what they used here, this is not our standard bug control air curtain. They chose to use a variable speed unit on here so they could find a good balance between insect protection and, and comfort and noise level of the patrons sitting by those air curtains. 
just, just a few pictures of different um, sanitation applications. The two pictures on the left are drive-through windows. The bottom picture is actually, it's called a PTW. It's designed for drive-through windows. It is very small, plugs into a 120 volt cord, whether it's unheated or electric heated. However, it's not moving a ton of air. So a lot of national accounts like Chick-fil-A, McDonald's, they prefer to use the top picture, which is a little, little bit more velocity. Actually, it's a significant more velocity, but uh, you have better protection against unconditioned air, flies, as well as fumes from the outside. Picture next to those, this is an eatery. You can see they have a wall of doors they wanted to leave open, again, to attract people to come in. However, with those doors being left open, uh, it was attracting insects. The smells were attracting flies. Also, they were losing all of their conditioned air. So they put air curtains covering each of those doorways, kept the AC in, also kept flies out, as well as um, helped with odor control as well. Picture on the right, just another eatery. You can see there's an outdoor mounted air curtain. Picture on the top right, we are seeing more and more of this, like I mentioned, bars, patios, windows, they wanna leave open, but they want something to protect it. So we do quite a few variable speed units for those kinds of applications. You can see it's lining the, the window up above. And then the picture on the bottom right, again, a, a grocery store. This is bug control only, they are mounted outside. If you are specifying a unit for outdoor applications, make sure to put that on the drawings or on the schedule. There are special precautions that are made. There's special motor mounts and rain guards that are put over those motors to handle that. And also it would have to come with that ETL listing for outdoor use. Another benefit, safety is huge. Uh, one big thing, using a heated air curtain can help prevent snow and ice buildup on the threshold. You can see this picture up here, it's snowing, cold outside. Without an air curtain there, snow could turn into ice on the threshold, jam the doors, people could slip. So they are using a heated air curtain above that opening to keep that threshold dry and safe. Picture right below that. Um, you can see there's a large industrial air curtain on that opening. A lot of people will try to use plastic strips. And I understand initially the upfront cost is, is less than an air curtain, but I cannot tell you the number of job sites that I went to look at, and they had either those plastic strips tied off to the side, or they had them cut so people could just walk under. So uh, there's a big expense in replacing they, those. They don't last long. With those plastic strips, there's contaminants, germs that can build up on those that can transfer to people or product. So you can put an air curtain there, uh, going to be much safer, unobstructed view through that open doorway, and there's not the chance of that germs from the plastic transferring onto things. Picture on the right, this is, and this is a completely different presentation I'm not going to get into, but this is an example of our cold storage air curtain. If you ever get into cold storage, please reach out. We have another app, our presentation on that specifically. But picture on the right, you can see what happens if you do not have protection. You can get ice buildup, condensation outside that freezer. We actually use heated air curtains on these, which sounds absolutely crazy to put heat on a freezer, but we always mount it on the warm side and it helps essentially delay the dew point inside of the freezer. So it helps prevent with ice buildup, condensation, fog. Now getting into better building design, this is kind of leading into the vestibule code and standard updates. In my many, many years of, of working with Powered Air, I've, I've talked to many engineers and I often hear, well, it's not so much anymore, but you know, oh, we don't need air curtains, we use vestibules. And I understand the intent of a vestibule is good. However, they do have their disadvantages, um, one being the inefficiency of design and poor usage of space. Uh, the picture on the top right, you can see that a large vestibule takes up a lot of room. Picture on the bottom, this is what I see all too frequently, especially high traffic areas. I know they're meant to create a lock, but often you have doors wide open, both of the doors wide open just with high traffic. So you're essentially creating a tunnel for your unconditioned air to come through. A lot of times they're inefficiently heated. A lot of people will use air curtains in conjunction with the vestibules, which is great. Um, if the vestibule is not sufficiently heated, they will use that air curtain as also a space heater, which I'll get into in, in the control section a little bit but they might have it, a heated unit operated off of a thermostat. So when the door was closed, that heated unit would kick onto low speed to provide supplemental heat. And then if the door would open when it's running in that space heater function, it would kick onto high speed. Also with vestibules, ADA regulation requires both sets of doors to be open for longer timeframes, allowing you know, a bigger chance for that unconditioned air to come through. 
with the vestibules, they can hinder handicap and wheelchairs, making it difficult to access the building. Again, like I mentioned, high foot traffic uh, can lead to both doors being wide open. And again, these here are both sliding doors, but if you get into swing doors that you push, you are increasing touch points to further chance uh, the cr cross contamination or spreading of germs. So also liability is a huge issue with vestibules. And I did not realize this until we started really promoting the vestibule exception, but dealing with door manufacturers, um, there is a huge liability with door closing on people, whether it's faulty sliders hitting people or swing doors, um, shutting on people, knocking them down, breaking bones or hips. There is a huge liability associated with those. And then also the final disadvantage is the high cost, not only the financial cost, but also the loss of valuable floor space. So, you know, a vestibule can be anywhere from $15,000 and up. So three major air curtain manufacturers in the United States, we knew that air curtains were as good as, if not better than vestibules. So we funded this AMFA study. Um, it was by Drs. Wang and Zong. And the synopsis of this, it was just air curtains were found to have better energy performance in all the climate zones compared to the vestibules. So this AMCA study paved the way for the code and standard updates, which now IECC and also ASHRAE 90.1 have adopted language that permits the use of air curtains as an alternative to building vestibules. So what does this mean for your clients? Obviously, a significant significant reduction in upfront construction costs, figure a $15,000 vestibule versus a $3,000 air curtain. Also, you can now boost marketable square footage. Um, rather than, than having that vestibule, you can now have more seats. You can now have more shelving for product. Also, reduce ongoing door service calls and maintenance. Uh, most doors are on a three-month maintenance period where they get maintenance every three months, um, which can get very expensive. In the winter months, with ice buildup in that threshold, it, three months is it's usually much more frequent than that. And then obviously increase energy savings. So uh, this is going to have a reduced infiltration, which will put less load on the building's HVAC system. Uh, this is going to expand the overall life of the equipment and then also lower your monthly bill. Here's just some of the code, how they read. IEC had the code update in 2015. I believe Matthew said that you guys are on 2018, so you are fine. This was adopted in 2015. Uh, bottom line here, you can see note number six. It stipulates that the doors, um, they have an air curtain, they must have a minimum velocity of two meters per second at the floor, have been tested in accordance with AMCA 220, installed per manufacturer's instructions, and also they must operate off of a door switch. So they must operate off that opening and closing of the door. And then in January of 2019, ASHRAE 90.1 adopted this as a standard. So it is good to go in both IECC as well as ASHRAE 90.1. or Manufacturers try to make it very simple as far as specifying these. So if you were to go to any manufacturer's website, chances are they're going to have, if you were to go, I, here's ours, um, commercial air curtains, there's a tab right there for vestibule exception. Click on that, it is going to give you a list of every unit that is good to go for that vestibule exception, whether it's low profile, something that's maybe powder coated. You can see there's different max install heights. Also, they have different heating capabilities. Um, here's something a little bit higher with more heating options. There are units that can be recess mounted into the ceiling. So again, it is we try to make it very easy if you're trying to specify an air curtain for that vestibule exception. Getting into proper selection, and there's two things that I like to consider. One is standard considerations, and the other are special considerations, things you might not originally think of. Proper selection, again, just standard things that, that should be brought to mind. What's the application? Is it a vestibule exception? Maybe you need something low profile. The picture on the right, you can see this is a glass front entry, so aesthetics was a key concern and they wanted something as small as possible to kind of blend in so it did not stick out. So you can see all of these doors are lined with a low profile unit. Um, is it customer entrance? If it is, you can, you're can you going to get something that's a lot quieter than what you might get for a bug control application. Is it an industrial door? Maybe interior building separation. If it is interior building separation, you are not gonna need something nearly as powerful as if it's exterior. The reason being we're not contending with any winds. So you can have something that's scaled back quite a bit. 
you know, cold storage, maybe a custom application, something that has to be coro duty, or maybe you have a hazardous environment. So things to consider. Other standard considerations, door dimensions, what is the width and height? Those are two things that will need to be known when making a selection. A lot of people try to like oversize that air curtain. You do not need to oversize the air curtain. Just make it as wide as the opening. Also, is heat required? If so, what is available? There is electric, hot water, steam, indirect, direct gas. Chilled water coils are also available. Uh, this is typically down in, in dry, humid areas where we supply those though. Another common question I get asked is when do you need heat versus when do you not need heat? Um, if it is an entryway where customer comfort or any kind of comfort is a key concern, I always recommend a heated unit. If you have a large industrial application, sometimes it's hard to justify that cost of adding heat because it can get, you know, it can add a significant amount of cost to that unit. This is a case study that we did at our factory. We are in Greenville, Pennsylvania, about an hour north of Pittsburgh. The unit that we have here is an unheated industrial unit. The outside temperature was 36.5 degrees and the inside temperature with the door closed was 67.6 degrees. So we open up that door, let the air curtain run. And again, th this is ambient air. And after two minutes, the temperature dropped to 66.7, so less than a degree. Redid the test, turned that air curtain off. After two minutes without the air curtain operating, it dropped to 42.2 degrees. So they really will be effective at protecting that inside temperature, even with just an ambient air curtain for more of an industrial application. Other things to consider is, you know, what's going to fit into the design or in the space? Will an exposed unit work? You can see the picture on the right is an exposed air curtain above the door. Or do you need something that's going to go in the ceiling? And if it is going in the ceiling, there's two different ways you can go about this. The picture on the left is just called an in-ceiling mounted unit. It is a bottom air intake. The picture in the center we call a recess mount. And what's going on above the ceiling for both of those? The in-ceiling mount unit is just a single bottom air intake unit, but recess mounted is a standard air curtain with a nozzle extension. One of these is not better than the other. I guess it's just personal preference for the overall aesthetic as well as what's going to fit in that space. So those are the proper selections. And like I mentioned, most manufacturers are going to have some form of selection tool on their website to make it easy for you. This is what ours happens to look like. We'll just go through an example. Let's say you are trying to build something. You have a building. You want to eliminate the vestibule, so you need a vestibule exception air curtain. Do you want this exposed, or do you want it above the ceiling? Let's say it's going to be exposed. And select a heating option, whether it's unheated, electric, hot water, or steam. We'll go with electric. And then the width of your opening. We'll do a 72 inch. It is going to take you to all of the units that we would recommend for this. And again, you can see here, they have different heights, 11, 10, maybe it's 14 foot. So these are all of your options that would be good for your particular application. Uh, it can take you to the specs, you can get the performance data, uh, electrical requirements, mechanical drawings, all from this page. Now, moving on to some special considerations, things you might not originally think of. Uh, first one, is there a negative air pressure present? If there is a negative air pressure present, if it is severe, it does not matter how overpowered you try to make that air curtain, it is not going to stop that air from coming in the doorway. Uh, what we would recommend is maybe just provide a heated unit so that air will come through, but at least it will be heated at the point of entry. But again, no matter how overpowered you make that air curtain, it is not going to be enough to overcome a severe negative air pressure. Maybe a specific aesthetic requirement is required. I know our standard is stainless steel, but we can certainly powder coat any color. The picture on the top, this blue, that is a blue martini in Orlando. And they have open doors that lead to a patio. They like to leave those doors open all the time, but they wanted something to protect the opening. So we powder coated that face plate to match their ceiling. The picture next to that is, this is actually Lego yellow. It's in Legoland in New York City. There's wraps available if you want something very custom, maybe to actually brand the air curtain. You can get Mylar wraps and any wood finish with any graphic. A picture on the right is actually a museum in Washington, D.C. They wanted a brass faceplate, so that is actually a brass piece of, piece of metal that's attached to that air curtain. Uh, other considerations, maybe custom heat. Maybe you have an application that gets pretty severe in the winter and you need a higher temperature rise, so maybe you need more KW. 
or maybe the opposite. You don't have a lot of power available, so you need a reduced KW to fit the power you have. Uh, other things to consider, do you need specific performance from hot water or steam coils? I know a lot of people stock coils. They buy them 100 at a time. Cost is lower that way. Uh, we do not do that. We realize you know, a specific job might require a two-row coil. So make sure you're checking the coil you're getting if somebody's providing some middles, that it's doing what you need it to do or you're, or you're getting the coil that you need. Getting into controls, 99% of air curtains that we ship are supplied with a door switch. Uh, sadly, what has become kind of standard in the industry is this picture on the right. It's called a roller plunger door switch. Uh, it is big. It is bulky. If something's going to break, it's going to be this roller arm. I try to discourage engineers from using this roller plunger door switch. There are so many better options. We kind of are standard. If we have it our way, our industrial door switches. They're a little bit more upfront, maybe an extra $50. The reason being they're low voltage, so there is a low voltage transformer included with the air curtain with these. But you can see the picture on the left, this is the industrial version of the magnetic door switch. Fork trucks can run over it. Uh, it's much more durable than this roller plunger. Uh, the picture in the center is our commercial SM300, much smaller, aesthetically pleasing. You can hardly see it. These are not the only door switches we could offer. There are door switches that can recess into door frames. There's wobble switches. There are so many options other than this roller plunger. So please, if you are using an air curtain, try and explore some of the other options. Something to keep in mind, if you are specifying a door switch, how many do you need? If you have, for instance, on the right-hand side, say it's sliding doors that open as one, you will only need one door switch. Same with a roll-up door, if there's just one door. However, if you have like this picture on the left, say you have swing doors that open independently, they will each need their own door switch. So you would need to specify two door switches per opening. We get that quite a bit when air curtains ship out with one door switch and it turns out they're on a swing door. So it's best to know that in the schedules. Other controls, time delay relays. This is pretty much a standard when it comes to a door switch. What that's going to do is that keeps the air curtain running. It's, it's, you can fact, we factory set it at 30 seconds, but it is field adjustable anywhere from zero to 100 seconds. So if you do have a high traffic area that's constantly closing and opening, um, that air curtain will not be cycling on and off a thousand times a day. It will stay on 30 seconds after the door closes, just in case somebody comes in afterwards. There are all kinds of thermostats you can get, programmable, locking covers. You can do motion sensors photo eye sensors. We can provide single point power connection for any unit, even if it's a 40 kW electrically heated unit, all you need to do is specify single point power, and that's certainly a viable option. Specialized control sequence, I talked a little bit earlier about that space heater function. Uh, that is very easy to do. It is a very common control sequence. Again, the air curtain would run as a space heater on low speed per the thermostat. And if the door would open during that time, it would kick on to high speed. We can provide the back neck controller. Uh, you can see the top right, there's so many different selector switches. There's decorator series. There's more of an industrial grade series. There are potentiometers. We offer an EC motor that is variable speed. So that would come with a potentiometer. Picture on the bottom right is an autopilot. So there are intelligent touch pads. We can tie into building management systems. Pretty much anything you want as far as a control we can do. Most manufacturers can. Sometimes I always recommend try to keep it simple when it comes to the end user. Uh, sometimes the simpler the control options, the better. But again, whatever you want is, is pretty much doable. Finally, for the controls, wind sensor technology. This is something we just introduced this year. And it is coupled. I mentioned we, pr we provide EC motors. We have been trying, I would say for 15 years, we tried to get an EC motor to use with the air curtain. The problem with most EC motors is they have a five to seven second startup time. And when you're dealing with an air curtain that operates on a door switch, as soon as that door opens, you need a full, you need the full protection of the air curtain. So five to seven seconds would not do us any good. Uh, we were lucky enough to find a manufacturer that was willing to work with us and they were able to make a custom motor for us that has less than a one second startup time. So we do offer an EC motor with less than a second startup time. And the nice thing with this is it is variable speed. So on high speed, it would be enough to cover a 12 by 12 dock door. 
and on low speed, it would be quite enough for an entryway into a church or a hospital or a school. So we use this EC motor for the wind sensor technology, and what we do is coupled with a pressure transmitter that will be ran through the wall to the outside of the building. So the difference in pressure between the inside and outside is compared digitally, and then the air current velocity of that EC motor is adjusted accordingly for optimum efficiency. So kind of why we do this, if you look at the, the pictures on the right-hand side of the screen, first is just showing, and again, these are CFD illustrations. This is an open doorway without an air curtain, uh, and it's going to experience in, air infiltration at the bottom of the opening while air escapes out of the top of the opening. Now, if you have an air curtain that is not powerful enough, what's going to happen is the picture below that. It's going to allow inflow breakthrough and the air curtain flow is curved inwards, does not reach the floor, so you will still have some infiltration. Uh, picture below that, if you have an air curtain that is too powerful, the air curtain is going to hit the floor, it's going to split with turbulence, and you're going to be losing a lot of that inside air, it's going to push it outside. So bottom picture, optimum condition for air curtain operation is when the air curtain flow reaches the floor, seals the opening with distinct and uniform barrier of air. So again, wind sensor technology, is something we just introduced with our air curtains this year. Getting into installation, uh, it seems like it would be so simple, but nine times out of 10, if we get a call that the air curtain's not working well, it's either the filter is dirty or there's something with, done wrong with the installation. And this is a very important note to keep in mind. The air curtain should be mounted as close to the door header or opening as possible for maximum performance. Now we realize that is not always an option. There's sometimes obstructions above the door. So as a rule of thumb, for every one inch, the bottom of the air curtain is mounted above the door header. The back side of the air curtain should be moved away from the wall a half an inch. So if you look at the picture in the top right, this is a perfect example of what not to do. So this was a popcorn stand. I don't even a stand. I guess a popcorn store in Maryland right on the beach. And they had windows they wanted to leave open. Uh, however, they were having flies in and they wanted to keep their air conditioned air inside. So they went with an air curtain. As you can see, that air curtain is mounted up at the top of the ceiling. And below it, there is probably about 18 inches of just kind of a glass transom. Well, what was happening is when that air was leaving, it leaves it on a plane towards the outside. So it was bouncing off of this transom and going back into the store drying out their popcorn and there was no protection over the opening so they they were not happy with us but when they sent us this picture we knew exactly what was going on so ideally they would have dropped that air curtain down so the discharge nozzle was right at that header uh, there were reasons they could not do that so we just made a nozzle extension like you saw for that recess mount to fit into the discharge and it kept that air uniform until it reached that header and then it was a great application it worked wonderful for them so again, here you can see these units can be mounted with threaded rod to the ceiling. Uh, these, the top left picture, they're mounted directly to the wall. Uh, the bottom right picture, this is a unit that was powder coated bronze to match the storefront. And then they wrapped the um, threaded rod in the same thing to match the, the entryway. People will tell me we cannot mount an air curtain over a door. And I always encourage them, send me a picture of the door. Let us try and come up with some kind of bracket system or some suggestion as far as mounting needs. It's always better to go over than vertically. So here are just different examples of ways that these have been mounted with roll-up doors, um, high-track turnbacks, straight-up high-track doors. Here you can see some more different applications where they made a little L-shaped bracket to extend and then threaded rod to go on top of that. So again, if you think there is not a way to mount an air curtain over a doorway, send us a picture, let us provide some options or maybe some suggestions. Vertically mount is another question. We don't get asked a lot, but we do get asked. You can vertically mount an air curtain. We always try to go overhead, but if it's not possible, vertical is an option. Again, you would need to specify this on the drawings because we put special supports on the motor mounts to support the weight going vertically. Here you can see that there's air curtains on both sides. If you're only mounting an air curtain on one side, you wanna make sure there's nothing, because there's nothing to stop that air. If it's mounted horizontally, it's gonna hit the floor and that's going to stop it. But vertically, there's nothing to stop it without another air curtain over there. So you wanna make sure it's not gonna interfere with processes that are close by. Getting into some custom and unique applications, I promise I am almost done. Just bear with me a few more minutes. 
Uh, here you can see this is a conveyor belt. We do a lot of these for cold storage. So they'll use a little variable speed unit over smaller conveyor belts. We also get into corrosive and hazardous duty. So we do a lot of seaborne applications, food processing, washdown facilities. So we need something that's, that's waterproof, I guess you could say, coro duty. And then we were doing a lot of work with Pfizer Pharmaceuticals. So we just decided to catalog what we were providing. We cannot call them explosion proof. So we call them hazardous duty. But uh, they do, if you look on the website, they do meet a lot of the requirements for hazardous locations. I talked a little about cold storage. Again, we do, there's a freezer air and a cooler air. We normally recommend for standard applications mounting the air curtain on the side you're trying to protect. Um, however, for these, and it's completely different, you mount these on the warm side. So again, a, a different presentation I'd be more than happy to give if you're interested. Revolving doors. This is a hospital in the Philadelphia area. And they had cold air was getting trapped in these pockets of the revolving door. And when it hit the lobby, it was chilling out the lobby. So you can see they have both of the side doors protected with an air curtain. However, in the bulkhead of the revolving door, they put a top air intake heated air curtain. So as that air was coming through, it was being hit with the warm air and at least it was warming. It was still coming through, but it was being warmed by the time it hit the lobby. Now, we do offer, there are custom units specifically for revolving doors. This is not a standard unit. This takes a lot of coordination, but there are units that would be provided with a special discharge nozzle that is rounded that would completely cover that revolving door. Here's an air curtain. This is another hospital in Pittsburgh. Uh, it's just acting as a mixing box. So where that door is at the end of the hallway was a parking garage. They had a severe negative air pressure. Um, in the cold winter months, that cold air was being sucked through those doors and filling up the atrium. They could not warm it up. It was causing a lot of problems. So again, we could not stop that air, but what they wanted us to do was provide a heated unit to act as a mixing box. This is a 12 foot wide unit. This would normally come with 40 kW to give about a 30 degree temperature rise. They wanted us to put as much heat as we could physically fit into this unit. So this air curtain has 80 kW giving a 60 degree temperature rise. Normally we don't stage heat, but for something this large of a kW, we did stage this. Um, that cold air was coming through, but it was mixing with the warm air from the air curtain. And by the time it hit that atrium, it was warm air, so. UVC lights, we now can incorporate UVC lights into the air curtain. Uh, they would fit on the intake of the air curtain. There is a line of air curtain called UVC air. What happens? Uh, germs, viruses, and bacteria are pulled into the intake screen of the air curtain. Upon passing through the screen, these viruses are exposed to that UVC light. Their molecular bonds are altered and ultimately they cannot reproduce or colonize and are rendered harmless. Uh, the discharge air from this is significantly reduced to dangerous pathogens such as the coronavirus. Uh, and then the recirculating air provides all the benefits of the air curtain and now you also have an air sanitizer. And the way that this is designed to run, it is this is another EC motor, so it is constantly running on low speed. So it's constantly purifying that air. When that door opens, it will turn on to a higher speed that they can set in the field. So they now have that air curtain protection. And then kind of along with that, there's also, this really isn't an air curtain, but it's just a little UVC air, it's a room recirculator with the UVC bulbs, um, minimal horsepower, very, very, small amount of air going through this, but it's just constantly recirculating that air. Now, final, final topic here, reduce noise levels. Like I mentioned, what I have heard so often is people don't like to use air curtains. They're loud, they're noisy, they sound like a jet engine. And unfortunately, a lot of manufacturers have kind of given everybody a bad rep. Uh, what happens if you look at the picture on the right, the way an air curtain is designed, you can see that top illustration, you have a motor with a double extended shaft where your blowers are. Well, they take those blowers and they point them directly down out of the nozzle. So imagine you have a four inch blower shooting air out of a two inch nozzle. It's creating a lot of turbulence. There is a direct path for the noise and you also have dead spots. So at trade shows, I encourage people to run their hand along the discharge. You will feel a blasted air where that blower is and then where the motor is, there's nothing. So it's not an effective design. It also is a lot noisier with this design. What we do, it's a very, very simple concept, the picture right to the left, we shift the blowers to the back of the air curtain, so it creates a pressurized plenum. The air pressurizes, when it's released, it is complete coverage, and it's also a lot quieter. I had mentioned before, we have that CED customer entrance door. 
it is 53 DBA on high and 51 on low. So the quietest error curtain on the market, at least in the US market that I've seen. So just getting a color advantage of the powered air, we do have that plenum, which creates quieter discharge, also greater discharge uniformity. Uh, most manufacturers publish, it's called outlet velocity uniformity. Ours is typically in the 90 percentile. You'll see other manufacturers with the design, the blowers going straight down the, in the 50 to 60 percentile. Um, our standard is stainless steel, 18 gauge 304 stainless steel and a number three finish. We do have BIM Revit files on our website. Um, you can access them through there. Again, I mentioned we can do single point power for any of our units. We can do custom control sequence, uh, unique applications, and then service, fast lead time. Something else, all of our units are shipped fully assembled and pre-wired. A lot of our competitors, they will ship the air curtain and you have to put it together in the field. So you will have the casing and then the motor plate you have to install and then you have to wire up the control panel. Um, all of ours ship fully assembled and pre-wired, and everything is shipped in two by four wooden crates, which that really now is hurting us with the cost of wood, but you know, it's it's for us, it's worth it. So, and everything is fully fired and tested before we ship. So that is all that I have for you. If you stayed awake, I really appreciate it. Uh, take a look, see if there are. I don't see any questions. Uh, yeah, good job. Hey, yep. No, yeah, no questions. Oh, looks like oh, Bob Juice says good job. Um, <laughs> yeah, thank you for your time today. I hope everybody enjoyed the, today's webinar and got something useful out of it. Um, again, if you have any questions, you can feel free to ask them now or reach out to us when we when we follow up to you about this webinar. We'll be sending you um, some information about this webinar as well as some links to previous webinars, and um, we'll also send you the PDH credit if you'd like it. So let us know if you need to receive that, and we'll make sure you're registered to receive it. Um, but anyways, thank you, everybody involved. Uh, Jamie, appreciate it. And uh, everybody on the line, thank you for spending time with us today. Have a good day. Thanks, everybody.